Hello everyone. We are back. Let me get my, my thing going. Let me make sure I can actually hear myself, that kind of thing. Make sure I can understand if my stream is working. Awesome. Good deal. Um, okay, let me fire this guy up and we're going to figure out what we're going to do today. Um, it has been a while since we've been streaming. It's been, I want to say two weeks, something like that. Um, so two weeks ago finished. Let me fire this guy up and get uh, quick time going. Two weeks ago, we did uh, we did a two-week app experiment where we tried to build an open source game uh, in just two weeks uh, from start to finish with 100% with 100% of the code built on stream. Switch to a device that supports ARM seven. What? I beg your pardon. I think I think Xcode updated while I was away. Run it on my iPad. There it goes. Yeah, I just installed it. So I'm gonna fire up the game. This is what we built. This is what we did. Awesome. Hello, builder. Uh, it's just a simple 2D physics game. It's kind of a sandbox game, right? Like there's not even, uh, there's all different stuff you can do, whatever. Um, there's all different stuff you can build. You can drag your things around. You can drag out new parts and they snap on. This is a piston and you can make it go, right? And then when you hit the play button, everything starts moving. Awesome. So yeah, you can just build silly contraptions and silly stuff. Um, and that was the point. Uh, so today, so two weeks ago, we submitted it to the app store. Um, I did that on stream as well. So everything from starting the project, building the game and literally submitting to the app store happened in that, on that two week stream, which was cool. Uh, I got an email back from Apple about a week ago that said, excuse me, that said, uh, we were rejected because the privacy policy URL was incorrect. So I updated the privacy policy URL, resubmitted. Hopefully we're gonna get approved today or tomorrow or early next week, something like that. You can actually uh, you can actually play the game. Uh, but if you wanna get in on pre-releases, um, on the beta, on test flight, all that sort of thing, um, shoot me an email or, or yell out in the chat and we'll figure out how to add you and that would be awesome. But today, I want to fix a couple things because after we submitted, let me go over here to our issue list. There are a couple ideas um, that we just didn't have time to get to, and there's one or two, um, one or two things that are broken. So let me pull up the thing again here, right? Um, so. You should be able to. You can you can drag you can drag parts around, and that's fine. That works. Um, and you have these properties here. So if I pull out if I pull out this guy, I can change his length. So now he's really long board, and now he's a really short board, and all that works fine. Excuse me. However, when you look at properties for a point, you can change the gravity of that point, and that works fine. So you can make a point float, and that's how we have. That's how balloons work. Is they have a. Uh, they have a negative gravity on those points, on its points. But the immovable does not work. That little toggle in the top left, that should, and it used to, let us pin uh, an object to the background, right? So that way we could say, okay, here's a board, lined it up with a fence, and I could take that, that point on the left, and I could say immovable, and then that board would actually be attached to that fence. Like it would just, that point would no longer move and it would kind of swing right there. Um, so I want to get that working again. Um, and I think there are a couple other a couple other things. Maybe we'll play with collision detection or maybe we'll like look at a, at a new part, something like that. Um, oh yeah, a new way to rotate parts, some new gestures, something like that. But let's, let's start 
by fixing excuse me by fixing the uh, that immovable checkbox um, so to do this that checkbox is in a properties view the point properties view and he is uh, a switch and I thought a switch extended control it does it does extend control okay because there's a place in our uh, I think it's in our physics view or properties view hit tests yeah this guy I thought this might be the problem because we, we selectively we selectively um, uh, filter out the touches that this view gets and we only we only allow it if it's a control so that way you can actually I think you can actually grab grab things behind it maybe not but um, anyway you understand uh, let's figure out why it is that we cannot tap on the on the control so there's my breakpoint here is my view, so if I tap on that switch, nothing happens. Yeah, so something, something's weird because when I, right there when I hit the breakpoint, I was tapping on the slider, but when I was tapping on, when I was tapping on the switch, nothing happened. Let's try let's try setting the breakpoint one earlier so we figure out what kind of class it is hitting. And it is hitting oops. It's hitting a UI view. Just a regular old UI view. Is it maybe it's a subclass? Let's do let's do this real quick. I just want to do an experiment. Experiment. Uh, UI view, foobar, right? Um, and let's do NS log. Let's log that super view and see what it looks like. Foobar, right? And then foobar equals foobar.superview. So this is just going to log every time I touch something, it's just going to log what that view is, and then it's going to also log the hierarchy of that view, right? It's parents and it's parents, parents, and it's parents, 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 and that sort of thing. Um, is the stream still doing okay? Are we happy with it? Things looking okay? I think Twitch is okay. I think YouTube is okay. I think, well, that's not the right thing. Okay, great. I think it's okay. It's streaming okay on YouTube. If it's jittery or if anything happens, um, let me know in the chat and I should see that. Okay. So now we hit the point and now we hit, we tap on the switch and we look at what our hierarchy was. So it logged, it logged a view and then an internal switch view. So it's a sub view of the switch. That's the, that's the long and short of it. So the guy that gets the touch event Okay, that's too bad. Well, here's what we're gonna do instead. There we go. If foobar is a re control, then return the original view so it can get the original touch. There, that should be fine. So now we should be able to switch. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, Okay, so now we can do that, we can do that, yep, and now we can switch. So now when we hit the play button, that point is anchored to the background. Awesome. I think I, did I file that? No, I was a bad person. Let's be good people and check things off our list. Um, fix and movable points. Pow, right? 
18. Awesome. The points. Um, there we go. So now that's up. So that's fixed. Uh, what's the next thing that we want to work on? If you can read those in chat, you can tell me what you think might be interesting. Two fingers to rotate parts. I think that would be nice because, okay, so let me show you how we rotate parts. Maybe we'll do that, but let's look. Let's keep reading and see if there's anything else that sounds interesting. Sound, sound I would really like to do. I haven't done shopping for sound effects yet. Um, so that's, we might, might be able to do that next stream after I shop around a little bit. Uh, animated logo, that'd be fun to build. Um, new part idea, powered wheel. Gears would be cool. Wheels should also collide. I think that would be a good one. All right, so here's my here's my thought. That one, or maybe that one, we could do next. Controllable parts. Oh, that would be interesting too. That's a bigger deal. Uh, figure a way to do collision detection, which we've done a little bit for balloons, and maybe we'll do for wheels. Um, Okay, so let's do let's do those two and see how long they take, and then after that maybe we'll poke around at uh, controllable parts. So let me show you real quick my, what my idea was for controllable parts. As as everything is running, you can uh, you can move stuff around. You can have different parts and stuff. Here's our here's a piston, right? And so my idea was to have when the simulation was running, uh, to have like a red, yellow, green buttons, maybe along the bottom left-hand corner, left-hand side, something like that. Um, and then you could assign and say this piston and up here in its uh, properties list in the top left, you could assign it to a color. And when it's assigned to a color, it only functions when you're holding down on that color's button. And so then you can manually do, uh, you can manually press pistons or manually run engines or that sort of thing. And uh, if you've ever played the game, I think it's Quop, uh, Q-U-O-P, where it's just like a super awkward marathon running game where you control the guy's uh, tendons and quadriceps. Um, is, that, is that what it's called? Quop. I think. Yes. Yes, that's totally what it is. Yeah, Quop is amazing. Um, but the, uh, yeah, Q-U-O-P to move your legs, great. So you press Q or W or O, and it's just a really awkward. Oh, I lost. Anyway, but it's just really awkward because you only have those controls, and you you're controlling the quad and like the calf muscle or something. Um, so, anyways, that might be fun because then you could build machines that you could control as they were simulated. Um, but let's do that uh, after we do a little bit of this usability stuff, let's do wheel wheel collisions should be pretty easy because we already have balloon collisions. So let's look at how that happens. Oh, the other thing that we can actually do that we should be doing is merge balloon code into oops mm stick right, and so that's um, those guys should really share code, and right now they don't. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we can refactor that so we can tidy up the code a little bit today too. And uh, that, all of those tidy, tidying options will be, uh, will be good. So let's do, we already did that one. Thank you very much. Close. Uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to do wheels should collide. This is our day right here. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Let's do balloons, and I think that is in constraint. Is it not? Where do we do collisions? Um, yeah, here we go. This is our collision right here. So what we might do, maybe we will do pull this functionality of collisions into uh, into the balloon class. How do we feel? How do we feel about that? I feel really good about that. I like that idea. Um, so let's do that. 
So next to constrain, um, actually, yeah, this is gonna be good. So we're gonna do constrain. Let's make sure that it, the points don't break. Um, that like, this makes sure sticks are the correct length, the piston is the correct length, that sort of thing. Um, and we can also do um, constrain collisions. Did I? I can't even spell collisions. Collision. How do you spell collision? Collision. 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 Yeah, I did it. I did it, he says, as he immediately forgets what it was. Right? I'm sure it's painful to watch me spell on camera. Okay, but we did it. Manage collisions with, and then this is gonna be um, objects, right? So that way we can, uh, we can deal with it colliding with anything else. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, man, my throat is uh, giving me a great day today. Okay, so let's go here. Um, this is actually going to be because we're a balloon and we haven't we haven't merged those two classes yet. We're gonna give us a correct class name, and because there's going to be lots of them, we should have done that correctly. Okay, great. Okay, okay, okay. So now let's move that code from uh, from our physics view this big block of code can get out of here and we can do b manage is that what we called constrain constrain collisions with balloons great we come in here we can paste that code and that just tidies everything up a little bit so instead of B, we're going to be self. Self.radius, B.center, B.center, center, and what's the other one? This guy, right? Okay, that's good. So that cleans up our physics view a little bit, which is nice. So that's constrained balloons, and so this method here, we're going to do the same thing for uh, for wheels, which I believe is right here, is it not? So constrain with um, constrain with wheels instead of balloons, but uh, that's fine. Yeah. Now wheel constraint. What I'm looking at now is why is this code right here? All of that, my goodness. All of that code. Why is that code not inside of this method? What does this method do? It constrains all our spokes, which it should do. And now, oh, this does, uh, this is bouncing for the wheel. That's what's happening. Yeah, that does bouncing. Where else do we do bouncing? It feels weird to do bouncing right there, doesn't it? Maybe not, maybe that's okay. I think we'll leave that for now. I don't want to. I don't want to over refactor or kind of get distracted when we when we really don't need to. So let's not care about it. Um, so let's do constrain with, uh, and this is going to be sticks, right? Um, so we're going to follow the same model that we did with balloons. So constrain collisions with, and we're going to go to the wheel class. Thank you very much. Down here, oops, oops. Typing really good today. 
and constrain. Awesome. Kadoke. Um, so now we're going to basically copy the same code that balloons have to manage collisions for wheels. Constrain collisions against that, right? There we go. Um, and so now we do, this is going to be mm stick. This is going to be other wheel. Let's refactor that so it renames everything like it should. I beg your pardon. In uh, sticks. There we go. Now, what was it angry about when I tried to refactor? There, now it does it. Oh. So how are y'all doing today? Doing pretty good. There, see, I don't know why it does that sometimes. Sometimes refactoring doesn't rename everything. I do not understand. Okay. Now we also want to check. We only care if uh, if it's a wheel class, right? Because we're only going to collide wheels with other wheels. So that's important. There we go. Um, so now we have um, equals uh, stick. There we go, All right? There we go. So now we say loop through all of our sticks. If it's a wheel, get the wheel, check our centers, move everything. I feel okay about that. So now I think, I think we're done. You get it in Delphi, uh, Akatera? Hopefully I'm saying your name right. I've never worked in Delphi, to be perfectly honest. Do you like it? I've never done that. Ever, ever. What do you use it for, actually? I haven't heard many people use Delphi. What do you use it for? Um, okay, let's see if that does what I think it does. Um, Okay, so here's a wheel. Here's a here's a wheel. Come here, let me grab it. Yeah, look at that. You can't look at that because I, I turned the screen off. Look, I'm pushing it. They are colliding. Yeah, there's a there's some kind of issue where Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm gonna get my other iPad because this one is having this guy's having a really bad performance day. Yeah, I think Delphi is uh, use it for work. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's been really popular, um, especially in the past. Lots of stuff has been written with it. I just never had never had a reason yet. That iPad plug-in. I think my cables are also having a bad day. There it goes. Because sometimes it does not. Sometimes it does not uh, connect to Xcode right right after I plug it in. Try again. All 
We might do a draft uh, performance fix today too and just see how we do on, uh, on performance. So there's a wheel, there's a wheel, there's a wheel. We hit go. Yeah, those are doing good, right? Awesome. Awesome. That's pretty good. I like it. We will call it a success. Okay. Wheels collide. Number five. Awesome. Being really good people today. I already closed two issues. Super good. All right, what was the other thing? Two fingers to rotate. What do we think about that? I think that would be would be fun. Uh, so my thought for that is uh, you pull this guy out, and you can rotate by grabbing onto the end point. Um, but we could rotate around its that object's center with uh, with a two finger gesture. Oh, I didn't know it was not free anymore. I thought it was still free. Oh, well, no wonder. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cater is saying Delphi is not free anymore uh, in the chat. Um, for those of you watching elsewhere. Um, yeah, so we could do. Do we like that idea? Pinch, pinch to rotate. GitHub URL should be in the description. Oh, maybe it's not actually. Gosh, I might have put the wrong description up. So GitHub URL is right here, spare parts app. Uh, you can go to my name, um, github.com slash Adam Wolf. Uh, you can find it there too. Sorry, did I not put it? I'll put it in the chats. Just in case. Oh, I can't, I can't put it in a YouTube chat, but anyway. Every other chat, it's in there. Sorry if I missed it. <laughs> you bet, Frank. Um, okay, cool. So, um, yeah. So let's okay. Let's just put the gesture in and then see how easy it is to do and kind of how it feels when we put it in. Because um, it might end up. I I feel like this is one of those things that's gonna be. Um, I think it's a pan gesture. Is that what we use for that? For a pinch, he says. Okay, pinch gesture. Um, is it pinch or pan to do rotate? I think it's pan. Yeah. Let's call it a rotate gesture. Um, okay, cool. So let's see just kind of how it feels to do. Selector, rotate, gesture, right? Both add gesture, rotate, right? Oops. Okay, so now to get to get the angle of rotation. We can get translation in view. Maybe it was pinch. Oh, there's a rotation gesture. Man. Makes life easy when they when they build it for you, doesn't it? There we go. And there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes it way easier. Rotation, and then what else do we get out of that? Get something else. Velocity. Do we care? I don't think we care about. We don't care about velocity. Yeah, we just care about rotation. Cool. Let's just make sure we get we log something meaningful. What I'm hoping this does is that it, it shows me the delta rotation as opposed to like the angle that the touches are when they uh, 
when they're put down on screen. All right, let's try that. We're just going to, we got a selected thing. It's not, uh, that, that guy's not being hit at all. Okay, so that means, do we have a gesture delegate where we're preventing where we're preventing things, preventing which ones can uh, work together. Telephone call. Um, I think we want, we want to override that guy. I should recognize simultaneously. Yeah, let's try that. And let's just uh, return yes. See what happens. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now you see the logs in the down in the back. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So it starts. Yeah, it starts at zero no matter where I put my fingers. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, so now let's go to our rotation. Where did it go? Here we go, rotate gesture. We want to get the selected stick and we want to We want to rotate by. We want to rotate by its uh, its previous the d the delta rotation, right? Like uh, I can't just do like rotate by rotate gesture dot rotation, right? Because if I do that, then look here in the log, it's going to rotate by you know 0.35 radians, and then again by 0.35 radians, even though it only changed by 0.001 radians, right? So we just want to rotate by the delta. Um, and so my thought is to, yeah, I think we're, I think we're gonna have to manage that, that delta ourselves. Um, it is really warm in my house. I'm gonna turn the air conditioner on. I'm having a really hard time. It's like 97 degrees in here. There we go. Great. Um, yeah, I think so. We do if dot state is UI gesture began, right? Then we'll reset our delta to zero. Else, I think just else, not even else if, right? Then uh, delta equals uh, current minus last, right? So we really only care about reset our last to zero. That's the thing that we need to track. And then we're gonna calculate the delta every time. So where we set this guy, we're also going to track last rotation value, right? And then last rotation value is zero. And then CG float delta rot is pan gesture dot rotation minus last. All right? Feel pretty good about that? That feels right. And so then we can do we can do this. Right? Does that feel good? I like it. Um, yeah, let's let's try this and see how it goes. My what I'm thinking about right now is that 
this is going to be modifying points and it's going to be modifying points outside of our um, constrain calls. So if I come down here, I feel like we might need to do um, constrain everything, update points, and then uh, like uh, rotate stuffs, right? It, it might need to go there, um, but for now it's okay. Let's keep it where it is and just see how it works. I don't want to, I don't want to over fix something if it doesn't need fixing. Um, so where is it? It's up here. Okay, so that means we need to make a rotate by, and we're going to rotate it around its center point. So let's go here to our stick. Rotate by CG float rads, All right? Rotate by a little bit of radiation, a little bit of radians. Okay. So. I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to calculate the center of this, which is going to be self p1.x plus self.p2.x. Divided by two. And the same thing here, right? Oops. So we calculate the center, and then, uh, beg your pardon? Oh, P0 and P1. And then we make a transform. So a CG affine transform. Transform make. So we translate to the center. That might have to be a minus. Um, Um, so we're going to use yeah transforms, and so we transfer to the center, and then we transform rotate. There we go. Oops, and we're going to rotate. I thought that would format a little better. It did not. And then we translate back here. Translate and there we go. Negative C dot X and negative. Oops, come on now. I do not want you to autocomplete. C dot Y. And I might have these signs backwards. Um, where did I where did I get my my parens wrong? That closes the rotate. That closes the translate. Yep. Okay. So then we can do um, self dot p zero is g fine transform. How do you apply it to a CG point? CG point apply. Yeah, that's what I want. Self.p0 so with our transform. Right, and that's read only. So is that what we want? What are you angry about? Oh. As CG point. Right? I 
think that's I think that's what we want to do because this is going to this translates to the center of our stick rotates and then transforms back to the center right so back back from the center so what that should do is that should rotate any point we give it around the center of our stick and we're giving it uh, the two endpoints of our stick which are going to rotate around the center and so the output should be correct so we're going to do p1 p1 Zach this is uh, objective C self dot p zero dot x cgp zero dot x right Yeah, I don't know why it uses a .m for Objective-C. Like, uh, that file extension does really just does not make any sense to me either. Right? Okay, so I think this does what we want. We did everything we're supposed to do. Um, let's, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Bonk. Okay, so you're going to pull a stick out. We're going to rotate. Nothing. Oh, selected stick. Oh, it's because when I because when I rotate it unselects the stick. So it never <laughs> Yep, that would be a problem. All right. Um, so let's fix that so that way it does not deselect a stick. Let's figure out where it's getting deselected. Clear objects. Why are you getting called? You're not getting called. Okay, fair enough. Tap point gesture, maybe you're getting called? Yep, so you're getting called when I select it. I just selected the stick and now I'm doing the pinch gesture. You're not getting called when I do the rotate. Uh, move point, I don't think you would be the problem. No, that's only if it exists, so that's not it. Grab stick. Maybe if grab stick is nil. And that's where it would be happening. So I just selected it. It is now selected. I'm going to rotate. Yeah, and now when we rotate... Um, sorry, that's my chat window that I can use to see what's going on. I had to move it real quickly. Yeah, so grabbed grabbed stick is nil during the move point gesture. Okay, so maybe maybe we just don't allow the instant pan gesture. Should receive touch. Uh, should recognize simultaneously with gesture recognizer. Return gesture recognizer is kind of class class and other gesture recognizer is kind of class. Right. So if that's not true and the other one's not true, then they're allowed to play together. Otherwise, they're not allowed to play together, right? If either one is the instant pan gesture, then return no, right? And so then the other one we want is gesture recognizer should require failure of recognizer, gesture recognizer, right? So if... UI rotation gesture recognizer. So if this one is the rotation and the other one is the instant pan, then I know that I could just return this, but I just want to make it 
explicit because I think we're going to have to add more if statements in here. And I don't want to have a giant chain of if this or this or this or whatever. So it's just for code clarity. All right, let's see if that helps, if that does what we want. Okay, so we pull this guy out. So now when I rotate, we're still still doing it. Okay, maybe it's because my I didn't. Here we go. Yeah. It's still, it's still deselecting it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put my fingers down at the exact same time. Um, maybe if we have, where's our instant pan? Can we set a maximum touch count? Or does it hit, does it start rotation at all? I don't think it does. I don't think that rotation even gets called. Because if it does, then if we're rotating, then we can also do, um, yeah, it's not even getting called. Yeah, in fact, it's not it's not even recognizing it all anymore. Um, all right, so that's not working. But I think it's because this guy, anytime a touch happens on screen, we change his state to began immediately. Um, there was another one of these methods that we might need to implement. But anyway, but because this guy starts, his state starts immediately, the rotation is waiting for this guy to change to a failed state, and it's uh, it's not, it's staying in the in the began state. Um, uh, Reader Shack asks if it's Swift. No, it's not. It's Objective C. I've actually not played with Swift with Swift yet. Um, be required to fail by gesture recognizer. Is that going to do what we want? I don't even know if this is going to do what we want. No, so I think If we have two touches down on the screen, I might I might just not be able to make it an instant pan gesture. I might have to undo this work. Oh, maybe not. So, oops, wrong one. Um, does that does that do what we want? So that way if I put two touches down, will it fail after that? That's what I want it to do. I want it to fail after I hit two touches on the screen. I don't want it to, I don't want it to fire if there's, yeah, so now we're rotating. Oh my gosh, did that really? <laughs> Look at that. That's great. That's that's not doing the right thing because it's 
It's like a wheel. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Bonk. We forgot to update that. Okay, now I think it does what we want. That's exactly what we wanted. It was that max number of touches. That was the uh, that was the guy. Come on now. There we go. Yeah, you just have to make sure you put your fingers down right at the right at the same time. If you don't if you don't put them down right at the same time, then it doesn't uh, it doesn't work. We can also do it with a pan to move it around. Maybe that would be good. All right, so let's do that with a pan gesture, with a two-fingered pan gesture. All right, so that's our rotation. This is our two-finger pan gesture, right? So this guy, the grab point, you, sir, maximum number of touches. Yes, you did the right thing. And now we also want our our two finger self. Um, this is going to be two finger pan. Oops, I forgot the uh, selector. Okay, good. Dot minimum is two. Great. And add gesture, add one of you. Awesome. Okay, cool. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and add that. Okay. So I think we're gonna have to, we're gonna need to do the, oh, this is actually instant pan. I think we're going to do the same thing we did for rotation where we kept the last rotation value. Um, we're going to want to do the same thing with uh, this pan, so we keep the last pan location. And then we can do uh, a delta, a delta translate, basically. Um, so let's do that. And this is also going to affect our gesture delegate down below that we just, uh, that we just fixed. Um, yeah, that's fine. So last rotation, so this is going to be CG point, oh come on now, CG point, last tran translation value. Yep, that feels good. And now we go to two finger pan gesture, so this guy is a CG point zero um, so you point the current translation is what we want translation in view um, self right that's what we care about um, okay, yeah. Now we do, this is a point, like that, and then his X is our current X minus our last translation X, right? Feel good? Yeah, and then our last translation is now our current translation. And so this is going to be translate by.
right? And now we need to add a translation to our stick. So we have a rotate by, and now we have a translate. And that's a CG point with the translation. And our rotation here, awesome. P0.x is going to be that plus the translation.x, right? And then we got to do it for the y as well. There we go. So now we should be able to, if everything works the way I think it's going to work, we should be able to uh, translate as we rotate, which would be really good. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. That translates. We're also gonna have to update this for things that uh, that have more than two points, right? Because the stick has two points, but like the uh, the engine has three, the wheel has like twelve, no, it has a uh, five, but uh, so we'll have to do that too. But let's 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 get it working for sticks first. Let's see if that does what I think it's gonna do. Great. A little bit of caffeine. Oh my. <laughs> so it's, it's it's working, and by working, I mean it's not. It's going too far. Is the <coughs> excuse me? The translation is that. Um, Is this already a delta, maybe? And I'm, uh, I'm double delta, is that what's going on? Go there, cut it like that, it's selected. No, now you can see in the logs down there that as I'm, as I'm moving my fingers up and down, it is, uh, It is only move. It's it's showing me the the total translation since starting the gesture. Um, so that's not it. So that means this guy should be a lot smaller, right? So now let's look at the logs. No, uh, the uh, the delta is equally enormous. Why would that be? Okay, so let's do let's figure out what's going on. So this is our current. This is going to be our last, and this is going to be our delta, right? Oh. And we figured it out. It's uh, I had an X where there should be a Y. You might have been staring at that, yelling at me. Okay, put that down. Yeah, there we go. Now it's good. Can we? We cannot rotate. We can only translate. And that we and we cannot rotate. So we want to be able to rotate and translate. Um, so let's go to. Oh, that's why it's because the instant pan. We already turned that off down here. So we want and other gesture is not 
this is our translation. What do we call that? What did we call it? Two finger pan gesture. Great. Two finger pan gesture, right? Okay, and and the other guy is not that, or the other guy is our two finger pan gesture, right? So we are we are allowed we are allowed to recognize simultaneously if it's not a pan gesture unless it's the pan gesture, right? Receive touch. Okay, now I think it'll do both at the same time. Let's see. Nope. No, it does not. So if other gesture recognizer is two finger, if the original gesture recognizer is two finger, and then this can just go back to what it was. This guy needs the same the same thing. Right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's pull uh now nothing now none of the pan gestures work. Heck, man. Two finger pan. It has a minimum number of touches. How did that just? Uh... Oh, I think I want no. We should not require anything to fail if it's the two finger pan. I had that backwards. So don't fail if it's a two finger pan. If it's a one finger pan and I'm rotating, then fail. Otherwise, don't fail. Yeah. Okay, great. So now I can I can drag that around, which is great. I can pull something out. I can I can still translate, but I still can't rotate. Man, that's frustrating. What am I doing wrong? Why are these not why are these not playing together? Should recognize simultaneously with, right? If gesture recognizer is rotation and other gesture recognizer is uh, two finger pan. Turn yes. You are allowed to be friends. Um, same thing here. You are also allowed to be friends if you're backwards. Otherwise, stuff, right? That's what we want. You're allowed to be simultaneous. You don't require anybody to fail. Okay, pull that guy out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do not get what's going on. 
Why are you not allowed? You know what I forgot and we should probably do? Bam. All right. There we go. Comment out. Okay. We're going to do it this way instead because I think this will be a lot easier. So, two finger pan, require gesture recognizer to fail, grab point gesture, All right? Rotate gesture, require gesture recognizer to fail, grab point gesture. Um, I think there's also a method for property for um, we might have to subclass I really don't want to subclass but we might have to do that because that lets us uh, can be prevented by and, and that sort of thing um, So I think that's all we, all we want. We just want to make sure that they both that they both don't play with the grab point gesture. Otherwise they're okay, right? All right, let's subclass the rotation gesture. I guess because it's still not still not doing what we think we should do. I did not think we would have to do that. Um, this is one of the things that that frustrates me a little bit about gestures is you can you can manage stuff with a delegate. You can manage stuff by calling the the property, right? This guy, and you can subclass. So there's there's three different ways to do what feels effectively like the exact same thing. Um, so it's a little frustrating figuring out which which one you need, or if you need some combination of the two. Um, maybe that's just me, but man. Uh, um, UI rotation gesture recognizer. All right, let's do that. It's fine. Okay, so now you are built here. You're now custom. And we're just going to manage everything in a subclass because subclass. And then when we build the rotation, we do it here, there we go, touches began, touches moved, and now we have our subclass, which methods do we care about, we care about care about those, right? So this is the same as the delegate. That's the same as the delegate. Okay, that's fine. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Should be required to fail by gesture recognizer. The the instant pan 
if self dot um, for a one finger pan, yes, we can fail. not going to require anybody else to fail. Uh, same here, we can be prevented if we're a one finger touch. And we cannot prevent anybody, right? Feel good? I like it. Actually, um, prevented gesture recognizer if is kind of class and then instant. Oops, sorry. Not instant class. So we can prevent it if other dot is one. Right, so if the other guy has one touch, then we can prevent it, right? If we're one of the guys that does not have one touch, and if right, so if we're a two finger touch, we can prevent the one finger touch. I think that that feels correct. If we're a one finger touch, we're allowed to be prevented. Otherwise, we're not allowed to be prevented. Yep, feels good. Uh, we should not, we're just not going to require a failure. And we're required to fail if we have one. I think that's okay. Um, feels good. Now here, Go in here to custom rotation. Maximum number of touches does not make sense for that. Let's include the pan gesture so that way we can play nicely with it. So the rotation is allowed to prevent a one touch pan gesture. It cannot be prevented by anything else. It should not require and should not require, right? Okay, cool. Let's see how that does. That might do a little bit. I think we might also have to set the delegate so that we can set the is allowed to recognize simultaneously. Oh no, there we go. Now I'm now I'm translating and rotating. Cool. How happens if I do it on a box? Yeah. The constrain, the constraints on the box are making it not rotate very much. Kind of rotates on a, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I don't know how I feel about that. I might, excuse me, I might rotate twice as fast. So our delta, all right, times two. Let's see how that feels. So now with something that's connected to a big, to a big machine, if I rotate, it rotates a little bit, a little bit better. Same with tr same with translation. Translation is a little bit fuzzy, but that's because of the constraints. Actually, you know what we could do. You know what we could do. Um. 
this is exactly the issue. Let's commit what we have first. Gesture. All right, awesome. And what number was that? That was number uh, Sixteen. Cool. So now that code is up. Awesome. Um, how are we doing? We're just still doing pretty good on the uh, on the streams and everything. Looks like it. Yeah, we're still doing okay. Yeah, good, 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 good. Um, I think so. What I was getting at is. Uh, is this method, these these gesture methods, get called outside of our uh, draw calls. And so our draw calls here, this guy constrains all the points and it makes sure things are the right size and everything like that. I think we might want to do, I'm trying to figure out where where we could put in the rotation update, right? Like, should we do update rotation here? Should we do it here? This would make it rotate five times the amount, which is probably not what we want, right? But right now we're effectively doing it right here, right? We're updating the rotation, so we're saying we're saying uh, grab this point, rotate it just a little bit over here and this point right here is getting rotated a little bit right here off to the off to the right so that's fine but then this constraint is happening five times which all of these points want to be in a box shape because the sticks want to be these all these same lengths and so that constraint slowly pulls all of the points back into a box shape because as we rotate just this one board we're rotating this one board out of the box shape and then the constraint is effectively averaging all four points of the box back into a perfect square. But it's averaging those two points of the board backwards from the rotation to, to average it. Does that make any sense? So I'm trying to figure out the best way to either, well, we'll just deal with it, which is probably what, what we should do, I think. Because um, it's, it's okay right now. Um, but it would be nice to have it to have it exact. Um, if I push it, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's probably okay. It's it it lags a little bit. Like it it feels a little fuzzy because that because that for loop is uh, is averaging so much. Um, but I think I think it'll be okay. Let's get rid of our logs because those are slowing everything down for sure. Save. Yeah, those those logs are okay because they just they happen pretty rarely. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Feels a little. Feels a little better. The rotation, yeah, I think rotation does need to be times two. I mean, it's just, it just takes, otherwise you have to, to rotate it even 90 degrees. You've got to do the gesture like five times. And it's, so let's, let's put it back to two. That'll mean, so let's do it here for this one and for the box. For the box, it feels really good. For this guy, it goes even a little bit faster, maybe maybe too fast. I don't know. There we go. That feels good, and then that way you can just kind of like, so it's, it's a little bit easier to to adjust parts. Yeah, I think that's okay. Okay, cool. So the other thing, um, 
that I remembered. So we take our point out. So when you when you take an object and you add its endpoint next to another guy's endpoint, right? You see those two two nails? They snap together. Awesome. Well, an interesting side effect of that is if you make a board super short, if I can do that. Oh. <laughs> now it's now it's always Now it's always doing that. That's funny. Let's let's get the uh, the two finger pan. Minimum number of touches two. Why would you pan? Why would you pan with one touch? Okay, this is something that just does not make sense to me. I have that two finger pan. Let's let's verify to ourselves that this is the guy that's getting called, right? We'll go right here. That's fine. So, if I start dragging one finger on screen inside of that properties window, then it begins. What? What? And gesture. This should be a two finger pan gesture. That is the correct. I'm just verifying the addresses. They are not, are they not the same? They might not be the same. Let me move this over so you all can see it too because I think it's behind my, my window. Okay, so the two finger pan gesture. That guy, that's the, uh, oops. So that's our address. And this guy's pan gesture matches that address. So it is the two finger pan. Um, you should be requiring two fingers. Why would it not be? I, I told it to have a minimum of two. I told it right here. And I don't I don't reset that anywhere. So why would that why would that ever allow? That's bizarre. That's super bizarre. Aliens in the computer, kind of bizarre. Let's see if, if doing that fixes it. I tell you what man, it uh now I can't now I can't change the length slider because one of the 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 pan gesture is failing is causing it to fail. Should required the instant pan gesture can tell a different instant pan gesture to die that's fine. Can be prevented by some other gesture of any type. That's fine. Should require failure? Nope. Should be required to fail by. Yep. Custom rotation. Can prevent. You can only prevent a different instant pan. So why?
why is it requiring the the pan gesture in the in that slider to fail why is that slider failing Why would that slider be failing? Do we have any ideas? Any ideas? Two finger pan gesture minimum. Here we go. Instant pan gesture. One is only allowed to be one. It's only allowed to be two. So it's just your your tap, your number of touches required. No, there's not a requirement there. Why? Who would who would be who would be forcing that gesture to fail? Maybe it's down, it's because we we removed, uh, yeah, I don't even need the thing. Actually, I do. Let's go here, let's go backwards, one or two. I think what I really want to understand, I think the, the root of the issue is that is that this guy is starting here, right? What is going on here? Because that should never happen. And yet, that guy is happening for some reason. We told that gesture in particular, you have to have two touches, but it does not have two touches. So why would it do that? Why does it think it's okay to start itself? And let's also look at um, instant pan because that's not okay, and then it's also it's also preventing another gesture somehow. Should be required to fail. That's itself failing. Can be prevented by. That's itself being prevented. Can prevent. Is itself preventing somebody else. So now, if I drag the slider. Oh, I'm paused. Good thinking. Okay, so now if I drag the slider, I'm selected, not paused. Drag the slider and he goes. Yeah. So what if we do what if we do this? If that and
So this should force it to fail if I begin, if it begins with not two touches. Oh my gosh, what on earth? Am I calling this guy from more than two? Your state is began. So somehow you got a began state. You got a began state. Your number of touches does not equal two. I feel like it's minimum and maximum touches is getting reset somewhere. state and number of touches. So what does it think it's setting its state to? Right. So we go here, let me show you the logs, right? We'll clear them. State two touches one. So state two is that a chain, change state? Oh gosh, if um, self dot number of touches is equal to is greater than or equal to self dot minimum number of touches. And Tell you what, man, it's the most innocent lines of code. So it's setting to changed. We super sets to change, but before it sets to change, it sets to it fires the began to the delegate. Yeah, okay. Gosh. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Gosh. Okay, that's I'm gonna let's bet some money. How much money do you want to bet? Because I'm I'm pretty sure that's the that's the guy we're talking about. Alright. So now we come out here. Yeah, now we can change it. Oh my gosh, okay, great. Um, fixed uh, length slider for sticks. Okay, so now, after all that, I can go to the go to the thing I wanted to tell you about in the first place, which is, so you can, uh, you can drag the stick. It snaps onto a point, which is fine. All that makes sense. And then here, if you make the stick really, really short, those two points are pretty close. So now if you drag things around, it snaps to itself, which is ridiculous. That just should not make sense. Um, so to fix that, we're going to go here and replace point with point. And we're going to say If P um, is equal to P0 and new P is equal to P1, don't allow that, right? And then similarly, If P is P1, P0, don't allow it, right? So I'm not I'm not allowed to replace the first endpoint with the second endpoint of a stick. Right? There we go. So now we make it super short. We select our point, and now we can drag it around. We have a nice super short stick. Cool. Bunk. Cool, I like that. I 
Make you a little bit shorter. Maybe equally short. And then the piston, equally short. Oops, I attached that to the wrong thing. And everything breaks. <laughs> I love it. Okay, cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Don't let uh, sticks points um, overwrite each other. All right, pretty good. Now I think the last thing that I want to do is so you have a you have a spring, and every time you change the length of the spring, it just stretches itself out. What I would like to do instead is actually redraw uh, redraw the spring redraw its uh, its texture. So to do that we need to generate texture right here. Right? Springiness um, draw size yep I think all of that code is fine generate texture, put that code in there, so we have our new texture, and then here, clone object, when we, when we change the length, where does that, that's here, and stick, I believe, we have a set length property, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to call it. So now in spring, we're going to override that and we'll call super set length and then uh, self generate texture. And now it should hopefully be uh, look correct, kind of keep, keep the same spacing of each of the rings in the spring as we change it, yeah, you can see it. You can see that texture actually looks a lot better now, right? It's kind of pulling, pulling one of them out of the center every time. So that way, it looks like a like the correct, like a correct, uh, correct thing. And then as you stretch it, as you stretch it, the texture stretches, which is what we want, right? So that way, it stretches and looks like a spring as as it's bouncing, but. Uh, but as you change the length, it doesn't look like you're actually stretching the spring. It means that you're actually building a, a longer, a longer thing. I think. That's so much fun. So much fun to build these like just stupid little machines, you know. Jink. There we go. Now we have a bouncy box. Ah, that's great. I love it. Cool. Texture as its length is adjusted. Um, again, you can get the you can get the code. It should be in the description, but it's there on screen as well. If you wanna if you wanna pull it down, it's all open source, and it's 100% built on stream. So if you wanna know how something was ever done, you can go back and and watch the streams and kind of watch it get built uh, as it happens, uh, which is pretty fun. So, um, anyways, I think I think I'm honestly gonna call it there. Everything's everything's pushed up. Everything's happy. We have we have wheels. Wheels collide with each other. We did that today, which is pretty great. Uh, we fixed um, spring texture today, which is pretty awesome. We what else did we do? Uh, we fixed our gestures. We added 
we added a rotation gesture and a pan, a two finger pan and rotation gesture, which makes it pretty easy to, to build things. Um, and a little bit easier to adjust to adjust your machi machine, which is good. Um, actually, I wonder what happens. Oops, clear. I wonder what happens when we when we rotate a wheel. Can that? Can we do that? Yeah. So that does okay. Good. That's what I was wondering about. And same probably with the balloon. Now a balloon freaks out because selected stick is a balloon. Oh. There we go. We will only care about it if we care about it. I'm glad we checked it. So we just fixed another bug. Look at us. Look at us doing things. Doing stuffs. Cool. So now, yeah, now that gesture breaks on the rotate. Is kind of class stick. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, cool. We uh we did a lot. Balloons. Wheels. I wonder if we should have wheels collide with balloons or if we should only do kind of similar parts should collide with similar parts. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. Looking pretty good today. Fixed crash on two finger gesture with balloon. Cool. Awesome guys. Um, I think I think we're gonna call it. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, fetch the code. The code is in the description uh, if you want to take a look. And uh, it's up here on GitHub as well, so you can you can stare at it right up there. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. We'll probably do it again. I don't know if I'll be able to do it tomorrow, um, but definitely next week I'm gonna try and get a regular schedule going again. Um, it used to be Mondays. Might do Mondays. Might do Thursdays like today. Um, we'll just have to do it, but subscribe so that way you know when it happens. Uh, find me on Twitter. I tweet out when I stream as well. And uh, I will talk to you uh, next time. Thanks, guys, for coming out.